When we reflect on the grim history of the transatlantic slave trade, certain nations immediately come to mind. France, Britain, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain. Their roles in the inhumane trafficking of African people, chaining them and condemning them to lives of unimaginable suffering, are well documented and widely acknowledged. However, there is one nation whose significant contribution to this abhorrent chapter of history remains shrouded in obscurity, Denmark. Today, Denmark stands as a beacon of prosperity, a Scandinavian country renowned for its high living standards, progressive social policies, and one of the world's highest per capita gross national products. It is celebrated for its quality of life, environmental consciousness, and forward-thinking society. Yet beneath the surface of this modern-day utopia lies a chilling truth, a truth that has long been buried beneath the sands of time. Denmark's wealth and success, it turns out, were built upon the backs of African slaves. The story of Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade is a harrowing narrative of suffering and inhumanity. Despite being overshadowed by the better known histories of its European counterparts, this video aims to unearth Denmark's concealed past, shine a light on its egregious atrocities, and ensure that its dark legacy is not relegated to the dusty pages of history. It is essential to bear in mind that the Denmark of today is a far cry from the Denmark of centuries past. While contemporary Denmark is celebrated for its progressive values and robust social welfare systems, it was once a nation deeply complicit in the despicable trade that forcibly transported millions of Africans to the Americas in chains. In this video, we are going to reveal Denmark part in the dehumanization of the people of an entire continent due to the color of their skin, something the world doesn't really know about Denmark. Also, as a way of supporting our efforts, hit the like button of the video, share and subscribe to help the channel grow. Your support means a lot to us. On November 24, 2017, Denmark apologized to Ghana for its part in the slave trade. Anders Samuelsson, the foreign minister who visited Ghana as part of a trade delegation, including the Queen, said Denmark should be ashamed of its past. We share a dark history of slave trade, shameful and unforgivable part of Danish history. Nothing can justify the exploitation of men, women and children in which Denmark took part, he said. Even though the Danish government was part of the first wave in abolishing slave trade, the apology is centuries late. In addition, the country is more concerned about downplaying its part in the slave trade than making reparations. Denmark's role in this historical injustice is not extensively taught to the current Danish generation, leading some to believe that there's an effort to hide or downplay this aspect of the nation's past. In contrast to some of the larger European nations heavily involved in the slave trade, Denmark has often been characterized as having a comparatively smaller role. This perception sometimes leads to the claim that Denmark's involvement was not as significant as that of its European counterparts. However, historians note that while Denmark may not have been the largest player, it did play a part in the transatlantic slave trade and the colonization of some Caribbean islands, leaving a lasting impact on the history and descendants of those regions. To know more about Denmark's role in enslaving Africans, let's take a step back in time. The 17th century was a period of intense colonial competition among European powers. Nations such as Portugal, Spain, Britain, France, and the Netherlands were actively expanding their overseas empires, driven by a desire for wealth, territorial control, and global influence. These colonial ambitions were fueled by the European Renaissance, which had sparked a spirit of exploration and a quest for new trade routes and resources. Denmark, too, was drawn into the global race for colonial territories. The lure of the New World, with its untapped wealth and potential for economic prosperity, captivated the Danish crown and private Danish merchants. The prospect of establishing colonies in the Caribbean and the Danish West Indies, then known as the Danish West India, was particularly enticing. One of the primary economic motivations driving Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was the cultivation of cash crops, including sugar, cotton, and tobacco. These commodities held immense value in European markets and promised substantial profits to those who could produce them efficiently and in large quantities. Sugar in particular emerged as a highly lucrative cash crop and a focal point of Denmark's colonial ambitions. The sugar industry had boomed in the Caribbean, transforming the region into a global economic powerhouse. Sugar was in high demand, 
used not only as a sweetener but also as a preservative for other commodities and as a key ingredient in the production of rum. Danish colonists recognized the potential for immense wealth through the cultivation of sugar and they believed that the Caribbean's climate and fertile soil were ideal for its production. However, the successful cultivation of sugar required a vast and inexpensive labor force, which enslaving Africans could provide. The success of the sugar industry was heavily dependent on a cheap and abundant labor source. European colonists in the Caribbean initially relied on indentured servants, but this system proved insufficient to meet the growing demands of the cash crop economies. Enslaved Africans soon emerged as a solution to the labor dilemma. The African continent was seen as a reservoir of potential labor, and the transatlantic slave trade offered a means to tap into this resource. Enslaved Africans were viewed as a workforce that could be exploited for maximum productivity, with little regard for their well-being or rights. The Danish crown and private Danish merchants saw the potential for immense wealth in the exploitation of enslaved Africans. They believed that these captives could provide the labor necessary to cultivate and harvest the lucrative crops that were in high demand in Europe. Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was therefore driven by economic motives, similar to other European powers. Denmark cast a wide net in its quest for enslaved Africans. West Africa was a significant source of enslaved Africans for Denmark, and it played a central role in the transatlantic slave trade. Danish slave traders were drawn to this region for several reasons, including its diverse ethnic groups, established trade networks, and the abundance of captives who could be forcibly taken from their homes and sold into slavery. The country established a presence along the West African coast, strategically positioning trading posts and forts to facilitate the acquisition of enslaved Africans. These forts, such as Fort Christiansborg in present-day Ghana, Fort Friedensborg, and Fort Augustaborg in present-day Benin, became pivotal in Denmark's slave trading activities. Fort Christiansborg, in particular, served as a hub for Danish slave trading in West Africa. Built in 1658, it stood as a formidable symbol of Danish colonial power. Its imposing walls and strategic location allowed the Danish to control access to the coast and the flow of enslaved Africans. Inside its walls, the harsh realities of the slave trade unfolded as Africans were held in cramped and dehumanizing conditions before being loaded onto Danish slave ships. The coastal regions of West Africa became hotspots for the capture and sale of Africans to Danish slave ships. Here, Danish traders interacted with local African intermediaries who played a crucial role in the slave trade supply chain. These intermediaries were often responsible for capturing or purchasing enslaved Africans through methods that ranged from warfare and kidnapping to deception and coercion. One cannot underestimate the violence and suffering inflicted upon African communities as a result of these activities. Families were torn apart, communities were destabilized, and the collective memory of these traumatic events persists in the histories of many West African societies. While West Africa was a primary source of enslaved Africans for Denmark, the Danish East India Company extended its reach to the eastern coast of the African continent, particularly in present-day Tanzania. This foray into East Africa added another layer of complexity to Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. The Danish East India Company, originally established for trade with India and Southeast Asia, expanded its operations to the east coast of Africa in the late 17th century. They established settlements in areas such as Zanzibar and the island of Funzi, which would become instrumental in the acquisition of enslaved Africans. One of the key factors that drew the Danish East India Company to East Africa was its access to the trans-Indian Ocean slave trade. Enslaved Africans were procured from the interior regions of East Africa, including modern-day Tanzania, Mozambique, and Kenya. This expansion allowed Denmark to tap into a different stream of enslaved Africans, distinct from those sourced in West Africa. The trans-Indian Ocean slave trade was part of a broader network of human trafficking that interconnected Africa, the Middle East, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. Enslaved Africans acquired by the Danish in East Africa were often transported to destinations far removed from the familiar plantations of the Caribbean and the Americas. Instead, they found themselves laboring on plantations in places like India, Java, and Sumatra. This global dimension of the transatlantic slave trade highlights the interconnectedness of the different regions involved in this inhumane commerce.
It underscores how Denmark's participation in the trade extended far beyond the boundaries of the Atlantic Ocean and was part of a larger web of exploitation. The impact of the trans-Indian Ocean slave trade on East African societies was profound and enduring. Entire communities were disrupted as individuals were captured, transported, and sold into slavery. The social fabric of these societies was torn, and the trauma of this period continues to reverberate in East Africa's cultural memory. Furthermore, the trans-Indian Ocean slave trade contributed to the movement and exchange of diverse cultures, languages, and traditions. It fostered connections between East Africa and other parts of the Indian Ocean world, shaping the cultural and historical tapestry of the region. The acquisition of enslaved Africans was a gruesome endeavor that mirrored the brutality seen across the Atlantic slave trade. Danish traders relied on a network of local intermediaries and European agents who employed methods including kidnapping, warfare, and intimidation to procure captives. The process was marked by violence, heartbreak, and the separation of families. Once enslaved Africans were captured and acquired, they faced the harrowing journey known as the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage, the treacherous voyage across the Atlantic Ocean on Danish slave ships, was a horrific ordeal for enslaved Africans. These vessels were notorious for their inhumane conditions. Africans were crammed into tight, unsanitary quarters, deprived of adequate food and water. Mortality rates during this passage were staggering, as countless Africans succumbed to disease, malnutrition, and the brutal treatment inflicted by the ship's crew. The conditions aboard Danish slave ships were deplorable, with enslaved Africans subjected to overcrowding, filth, and a lack of basic amenities. The ships were designed for profit, not for the welfare of the human cargo they carried. The suffering endured by those who survived the Middle Passage left lifelong physical and emotional scars. The primary destination for the enslaved Africans acquired by Denmark during its involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was the Danish West Indies. This cluster of islands, including St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix, played a pivotal role in Denmark's pursuit of economic gain and colonial ambitions. Within this context, the cultivation of sugarcane emerged as the cornerstone of the colonial economy, a labor-intensive enterprise that enslaved Africans were brutally forced into, leaving an indelible mark on the history and legacy of the Danish West Indies. The Danish West Indies, situated in the Caribbean Sea, represented an enticing prospect for European colonial powers. The islands boasted a favorable climate, fertile soil, and a strategic location for trade and commerce. These factors, combined with the economic allure of cash crops like sugarcane, made the Danish West Indies a coveted destination for colonial expansion. The cultivation of sugarcane became synonymous with the Danish West Indies and was a central element of Denmark's colonial ambitions. Sugarcane, a tropical crop, thrived in the Caribbean climate and offered the promise of immense wealth to those who could produce it efficiently and in significant quantities. Sugar was not merely a sweetener, but also a preservative for other commodities and a crucial ingredient in the production of rum. The demand for sugar was insatiable, and it commanded high prices in European markets. This economic potential made the cultivation of sugarcane a driving force behind the establishment of plantations in the Danish West Indies. The success of sugar plantations in the Danish West Indies hinged on the availability of a vast and inexpensive labor force. Enslaved Africans, forcibly transported from their homelands, were viewed as the answer to the labor demands of the sugar industry. However, the brutal reality of life on these plantations was characterized by inhumane treatment, exploitation, and suffering. Enslaved Africans on sugar plantations were subjected to relentless toil. They worked long hours under the sweltering Caribbean sun, engaging in physically demanding tasks that included planting, tending, and harvesting sugarcane. The labor was backbreaking, and it exacted a heavy toll on the enslaved individuals. The conditions on sugar plantations were deplorable. Enslaved Africans endured physical and psychological abuse at the hands of their European overseers and masters. Whippings, beatings, and other forms of punishment were employed as methods of discipline and control. These acts of violence served not only to maintain order, but also to assert the dominance of the slaveholder. Enslaved individuals were often provided with inadequate living conditions. Cramped and unsanitary quarters, often no more than crude huts or barracks, offered little respite from the hardships of plantation life. Malnutrition and disease were rampant, 
further exacerbating the suffering of the enslaved population. One of the most heart-wrenching aspects of plantation life was the systematic separation of families. Enslaved Africans were bought and sold with no regard for the bonds of kinship. Husbands and wives, parents and children were forcibly torn apart and the anguish of these separations left an enduring scar on the collective memory of the enslaved community. The loss of family and the fragmentation of communities had profound and lasting effects. The consequences of these ruptured familial ties continue to resonate in the histories of African diaspora communities who seek to reclaim their roots and restore the connections that were violently severed during the era of slavery. Denmark's participation in the transatlantic slave trade was distinctive in several ways. Unlike some European powers, such as Britain and Portugal, Denmark did not establish massive slave trading companies that monopolized the trade. Instead, Danish involvement was characterized by the activities of private merchants and the crown, who engaged in the trade to varying degrees. Estimating the exact number of enslaved Africans transported to Danish Caribbean colonies is a challenging endeavor due to the scarcity of comprehensive records. However, historians have made efforts to provide approximate figures, which suggest that between 120,000 to 140,000 enslaved Africans were forced onto Danish slave ships during the entirety of Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. These numbers, while smaller than those associated with some other European powers, should not diminish the gravity of Denmark's participation. Each individual within this estimate represents a life marked by unimaginable suffering, brutality, and the denial of basic human rights. It is essential to remember that the transatlantic slave trade was not solely defined by the quantity of enslaved Africans transported, but by the profound impact on the lives of those ensnared by its horrors. One significant aspect of Denmark's history in the transatlantic slave trade is the commendable decision to abolish its involvement in 1803. Denmark became one of the first European nations to take such a step, marking a notable departure from the prevailing norms of the time. The decision to cease participation in the transatlantic slave trade was influenced by various factors, including changing moral attitudes, international pressure, and economic considerations. Denmark's move toward abolition was driven by the realization that the trade was increasingly seen as morally reprehensible and incompatible with the ideals of the Enlightenment era, which advocated for human rights and liberty. Denmark's path to abolition culminated in the Act for the Abolition of the Transatlantic Slave Trade, which was passed on March 16, 1803. This legislation declared an end to Denmark's participation in the trade, making it illegal for Danish subjects to engage in the purchase or transport of enslaved Africans. This historic act reflected a growing global movement against the transatlantic slave trade. It was part of a broader international effort to combat the trade and its atrocities, which had become increasingly visible and morally indefensible. While the abolition of Denmark's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was a significant step forward, it did not immediately result in the liberation of enslaved Africans in Danish colonies. The enslaved individuals already present in the Danish West Indies continued to endure the harsh realities of slavery. One of the challenges Denmark faced after the abolition of the trade was the need for a transition from a slave-based economy to one that was no longer reliant on forced labor. This transition presented economic and social complexities as the Danish West Indies had become deeply entwined with the transatlantic slave trade and the production of lucrative cash crops, such as sugar. It took several more decades for the institution of slavery itself to be abolished in the Danish West Indies. The road to emancipation was a protracted one, marked by various factors and events that gradually shifted the status quo. The year 1835 marked a significant development when Denmark declared enslaved individuals in the Danish West Indies to be legally free. However, the practical implications of this declaration were limited, as it did not lead to the immediate liberation of enslaved Africans. Instead, it established a form of apprenticeship system in which formerly enslaved individuals were required to continue working for their former masters for an additional six years. The apprenticeship system was fraught with abuses and hardships as it perpetuated many of the conditions of slavery. It was only in 1848 that Denmark officially abolished slavery in the Danish West Indies, granting full freedom to those who had long endured the injustices of bondage.
The abolition of slavery in the Danish West Indies marked a watershed moment in the region's history. It represented the end of a brutal system that had persisted for centuries and had been central to Denmark's colonial economic pursuits. Emancipated Africans faced the daunting task of rebuilding their lives and communities after years of oppression. They sought to forge new paths, establish families, and assert their rights as free individuals. The legacy of slavery continued to shape the social, economic, and cultural landscape of the Danish West Indies, as formerly enslaved individuals sought to assert their identities and build a more equitable society. Denmark's role in the transatlantic slave trade is a painful reminder of the depths of human cruelty and exploitation. While the names of France, Britain, Spain, and Portugal may loom larger in the annals of this grim history, Denmark's deeds are no less deserving of our condemnation and remembrance. As we reflect on Denmark's hidden horrors, we must bear in mind the enduring impact of slavery on the descendants of those who suffered. The legacy of this dark chapter in history continues to shape the world today, with racism, discrimination, and inequality still prevalent issues in society. But it is not just the enslavement of Africans that Denmark is guilty of. The country was also a colonizer. Denmark's colonization efforts in the Caribbean and Africa, driven by economic interests, left an indelible mark on the regions it controlled. The legacy of slavery and colonization continues to shape the culture, demographics, and social dynamics of these areas. In the Caribbean, the legacy of Danish colonialism is still evident in the architecture, place names, and cultural traditions that reflect the fusion of African, European, and indigenous influences. The scars of slavery also persist in the social and economic disparities that continue to affect Afro-Caribbean communities. In Africa, the impact of Danish colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade can be seen in the historical and cultural connections between the African diaspora and their ancestral homelands. The forced migration of Africans to the Americas led to the development of distinct Afro-Caribbean cultures, including music, religion, and cuisine, that draw upon African roots. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comment section as we are always interested in your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.